Hey, welcome back to In Shannon's Kitchen. Today we're making Shanghainese pan-fried pork buns. Now I know what you might be thinking, gosh, I already have a lot of recipes for pork buns here on this channel between the steamed and the baked cha siu bao, but this one is definitely different and it's actually unique to Shanghainese cuisine and you'll see it oftentimes on the Shanghainese American restaurants here in the States. And what makes it unique is this golden brown crispy bottom to the bun and then also a really rich porky filling that has a little bit of soup in it as well. And to get started, what you want to do is make your bread dough first or your bun dough. So I'm just taking some all-purpose flour, just plain all-purpose flour, adding that straight into a large bowl. And I'm using a kitchen scale here, so you, he you see me here just taking some out. And I find that the kitchen scale is the most accurate way of measuring your dry ingredients, so definitely recommend it. And you're almost guaranteed to have perfect results every single time. And then to the all-purpose flour, I'm just adding some instant yeast. You can also use active dry yeast, just, just make sure to activate it in the warm water that we'll add later. And then in addition to our dry ingredients, I'm going to add some uh, baking powder. So the combination of baking powder, which is a chemical leavener, and also the instant yeast, which is a natural leavener, it's going to help perfect that texture that you want for your you know, Asian uh, buns. So go ahead and stir that together with your hand, just making sure to break up any clumps of baking powder. And then now I'm just adding some warm water, you know, roughly around 110 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It's always safer to err on the side of less warm, just to make sure that you don't kill the yeast. And then go ahead and stir it up. And I'm using a gloved hand here, which honestly wasn't the wisest um, decision that I've ever made. It got quite sticky, quite hairy, and just kind of messy and difficult to work with. So recommend without the glove, so sans glove, or you know, just basically stir it together using some sort of utensil like a wooden spoon, just until all that flour is thoroughly moistened and you have no dry spots of flour left. And like most bun recipes on this uh, channel or that you'll find online, you want to knead that dough for roughly like five to seven minutes by hand. So if you're using a machine, it should be even faster than that, but just knead it until it's mostly smooth. You can see mine there was definitely not perfect, far from it. It just actually, you know, looked a little bit crepey on top and had small craters um, but it was mostly smooth so I was happy with that and you'll see in the end it actually turned out just fine and really perfect so you know don't fret if it's not perfectly smooth like a baby's bottom just go ahead and wrap it so it doesn't dry out and set that aside while we make the pork filling so for the pork filling I am going to add some dry shiitake mushrooms I just love the flavor it adds that nice depth of flavor and umami really just unique to mushrooms. So uh, I like the dry shiitake as opposed to the fresh one just because I feel like the flavor is even stronger and more pronounced. And the thing is with these dried mushrooms, you do need to soak it in some hot boiling water just to rehydrate them so it's a lot easier to chop up. And I do like to weigh it down so that way it's fully submerged in that hot boiling water. And then after about, I would say, 20 minutes or so, it doesn't really hurt to go a little bit longer. As long as the mushrooms are nice and softened, and of course the water isn't hot so you don't burn your hands, you do want to give it a nice ringing um, and just squeezing all that water as much as you can out. And definitely reserve that water because we'll be using it later. It has a lot of good flavor, so don't definitely do not waste it. And then here is pretty self-explanatory, just chopping up the mushrooms into thin slices and then just run your knife through it to have a nice fine mince or dice so that way you can incorporate it into your pork later. And so the next step here is just taking some chicken stock, which I'm going to add into a small saucepan and then combine that with the reserved mushroom soaking liquid that I reserved earlier when soaking the dry shiitake mushrooms. And I'm going to take roughly one cup of the broth and just reduce it down. So place it over about medium, medium high heat and let it boil and reduce and concentrate those flavors. Essentially what we're doing here is creating as much as we can a very concentrated flavorful broth to then gelatinize and add into our pork filling. And this is very much the cheater's version. It's not authentic and it's certainly not traditional. The traditional way of making these um, like soup, soup dumplings or you know like a gelatinized broth for soup dumplings or these pan fried pork buns is actually taking some pork skin along with pork bones and just simmering it in water to create a really rich deep 
and um, you know just a very rich tasting bone broth and uh, naturally pig skin has collagen in it which helps to gelatinize and essentially create a pork gelatin but what I'm doing here is kind of doing a cheaters version using chicken stock and some of that mushroom soaking liquid reducing it by half to help to concentrate the flavors and instead of you know using the natural collagen that you find in pork skin I'm just gonna add plain unflavored gelatin just like a Knox brand gelatin powder and obviously not the strawberry flavored <laughs> and you want to make sure that your um, liquid your broth is still you know pretty lukewarm or pretty hot really to help dissolve some of those granula gran granules of gelatin and then once it's all dissolved and stirred together you want to place it into your fridge to help solidify which shouldn't take that long really and then next thing I'm doing here is basically just combining all the ingredients um, to make your pork filling. So I have some about 80-20 fat um, ground pork. Make sure it's on the fattier side just to help create a nice juicy dumpling. And then to that I'm adding my mushrooms along with some garlic chives, just some Chinese garlic chives that you find at Asian supermarkets along with some fresh cilantro and you could definitely go heavy handed if you want. Honestly, if I wasn't filming, I'd probably go even more heavy handed on the cilantro because I love it and really adds a nice bright fresh taste to your um, pork buns. And then magically we have some garlic, some minced garlic and some minced ginger and I'm adding just a very sparing amount of salt just to help you know enhance flavor and the reason why I want to be sparing with it is because a lot of the other ingredients for example this oyster sauce that I'm adding here is quite salty just naturally so just keep that in mind and be mindful about of how much salt that you're adding so at the end of it it's not too salty in addition to the oyster sauce I, I just added a quick splash of some Chinese cooking wine that's always tasty along with some soy sauce again you know it has natural MSG in it so it's gonna help to enhance the flavor let's just be honest here and uh, also to that I'm going to add some toasted sesame oil just make sure it's a toasted version definitely I never buy the untoasted just raw sesame oil because it essentially has no flavor and it's more expensive so that makes no sense and then I also added a few dashes of white pepper just again for a little kick and if you wanted to add like things like water chestnuts for added crunch or maybe some shredded diced carrots uh, for color and just extra veggies, you can definitely do that. But essentially you just want to stir it all together just like you would, you know, making a meatball or a meatloaf. And the key here is to really take like chopsticks or even your hands and just blending it or really you can do this whole process in a food processor. You want to blenderize this where almost to the point where you're separating the fat from the pork from the actual like meat protein. And this really helps to develop the texture properly so that way your filling won't be too crumbly as you as it's cooked. So um, yeah, just make sure you have essentially a meat paste on your hands. So once you have a very attractive looking meat paste, <laughs> you want to check on your gelatinized broth. So at this point, you should have a nice solid looking piece of uh, chicken jello. <laughs> so you can see how shiny it is. It's quite interesting and quite unique method of uh, making you know these these pork buns and even the Shanghai soup dumplings. So one day I'll definitely have to do the more traditional version of you know extracting all that collagen from pig skin and all that stuff that's much more laborious but definitely worthwhile and i'm sure it would add like you know tenfold more flavor so it's still good though i mean the idea here is you want to have some soup and as it cooks and steams in the pan um, it's going to you know um, turn back into liquid and so it's going to be nice and juicy and soupy in the center so a very unique experience and so go ahead and dice that up definitely do as I say and not as what I did here in this video. Um, I would highly recommend dicing up your uh, chicken jello <laughs> into smaller pieces um, because it's just way easier to incorporate. So once your pork filling is prepared and ready to go, we're finally ready to roll, fill, shape, and of course cook and eat the best part of our pork buns. 
So off camera, I already divided the dough into six evenly sized pieces and then rolled each piece into a round sphere and then just placed it on the countertop, covered of course so it doesn't dry out and just let it rest for 10 minutes so that way it's a lot easier to roll out. And in terms of rolling out this dough, it's the same way that we rolled out the steamed chasu bao bao or the baked chasu bao dough where the edges are just slightly thinner than the center because of course the center is going to have to hold the weight of the pork so it has to be just ever so slightly thicker in the center. And then just take a heaping tablespoon of your pork filling, making sure to get a few bits of that chicken jello in there. And I'm certainly by no stretch of the imagination at all, I'm certainly not a folding a dumpling or bun folding <laughs> expert here. I just tried to make as many pleats as I could because I heard that was good luck, so that's always a good thing. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and seal up that, that bun as best as you can, just making sure there's absolutely no holes um, as best as you can because you don't want any of that delicious soup filling um, spewing out, you know, the little holes. So go ahead and do that. And this um, bun, you know, unique to other types of buns, like the cha siu bao, um, you definitely do not have to proof this at all. You can just go from folding, shaping, and all that, that whole process, to cooking it. So I'm just taking a cast iron skillet, or any like heavy bottom skillet would do, do here, as long as it has some high sides to it. And you just want to add each pork bun into that hot oil. I use about a quarter cup of oil. You do need a decent amount of oil, to be honest with you, to get that really golden brown crispy crust and just go ahead and add your um, pork buns directly into that hot oil and I'm not sure if I mentioned but the heat on my cast iron skillet is about medium or so I like cast iron skillets just because they distribute the heat really evenly and that way you have a nice golden brown crust with each bun and no places are like more burnt than others and um, you know it really helps to hold the heat as well And at this point, I think I was trying to check the bottom of the, one of the buns, like the first one that I put in, to see if it was golden brown. And I may not have caught it on camera, but it was in fact golden brown. And um, you do want to cover this as well, I forgot to mention. So you'll see me <laughs> pretty soon here in the video covering up these buns. So that way they can kind of steam up and cook all the way through. And I think I also missed this on camera, somehow I forgot to turn the camera on, where I added some water about halfway up the sides of the buns, so that way they can continue cooking and essentially steaming, um, so that way the pork is all the way cooked through, as well as the bread itself. And if you ever made pot stickers before, which I also have a recipe for on this channel, but if you ever made pot stickers in your life before, it's the same method where essentially you pan fry the dumpling or the buns in this case and you want to pan fry in oil and then add water let it continue steaming until it's all risen and beautiful looking like that and the way you know it's done is when most of that water is evaporated out from the pan so that way you know the bottom will be still nice and crispy even though you added water so now just go ahead and garnish it however you like. I thought, you know, black sesame seeds would add some nice contrast there, along with a bright pop from some fresh cilantro, or you can use chives or whatever you like. Um, but the most important thing here is that you enjoy these buns hot and fresh straight out of the pan when the uh, juices are still flowing from that pork filling. It's so delicious. And of course, the soup inside the bun is just that much more unique. And um, yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't wait too long to eat these because if you do wait too long, potentially some of that soup can absorb into the bun. And so you have like a, I don't want to say dry filling because the pork is quite fatty and rich, but um, you won't get that same effect from the soup. So just make sure to eat these hot and fresh essentially. And you can see how beautifully golden brown it is on the bottom there. Absolutely beautiful. And you definitely don't want a light tan. You want a nice deep golden brown tan, please. Um, that way you have a nice crispy bottom. And of course that rich, fatty, juicy pork in the center is so delicious. So definitely give this a try. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like button, notification bell, and I'll see you back here next Saturday. Bye.